Great to be here today, and uh, as Melissa mentioned, I'm going to be talking about uh, temporal and uh, bitemporal data um, today. And I guess the specific title of my presentation is the case for bitemporal data. But we're going to be setting a lot of uh, uh, you know kind of foundation conceptually around temporal data in general. So I'm just kind of guessing, you know, from the little conversations I'm hearing, this might be uh, a little more conceptual than some of the other materials that you get here, but I, I do promise uh, Alec prompted me to uh, include some code, so uh, we are going to get to uh, some, some code here, so don't get scared that it's all just going to be at a, uh, at a conceptual um, level. So first, temporal data, what is temporal data? And a nice uh, simple uh, definition that I think is useful is, is that temporal data is data that changes over time. Right? So for example, a company's credit rating changes over time. A company may have a credit rating of A in the first quarter of the year, a credit rating of B in the second quarter of the year, a credit rating of C in the third quarter of the year, et cetera. And data which changes over time in that fashion, we refer to that as changing over the valid dimension of time or from the real world or business perspective. Okay? So that's one way that data changes over time. Another way that data changes over time is that the value we have in a database for a company's credit rating may change over time, right? And that may not change in sync with what's going on in the real world. There might be timing differences. We may change the credit rating of the company in the database midway through the first quarter or midway through the second quarter or, you know, we may be off by days or minutes depending upon the type of uh, applications that we're working with. So that's another way that data is changing over time. And in fact, sometimes data changes in this way have, our data changes in this fashion have absolutely nothing to do with the real world. For example, if we make a mistake, if somebody does a data entry error or that type of thing. So this dimension of time, of the dimension of time of how data is changing in the database, we refer to this as the transaction time dimension or the database perspective of changing over time. From this uh, definition, you may guess already or have the, had the thought, well, most data really is uh, temporal in nature. It's not permanent. It changes over time. And the most common dimensions of time that we tend to talk about in computer science and in, in IT is this valid and transaction dimensions of time. And that's the scope of this deck or what I'm going to be talking to you about uh, tonight. Um, also important to note that we are treating non-temporal data as the trivial case of temporal data. And so non-temporal data then would be data which does not change in real life, in a system, or we do not track the changes in a database. And that's an important thing because when we talk about these different types of temporality in a database setting, generally what we're talking about is whether you can see the history of the data changing over these different dimensions of time. Bitemporal data then is when data changes over two dimensions of time independently. And then lastly, I you know, just want to mention that there are the concepts out there of multi-dimensional uh, data and are data changing over more than two dimensions of time. That's kind of for the advanced uh, topics. Okay. So this just kind of lays out then uh, you know, these four types of temporality that I talked about uh, in a database. And you can see here that non-temporal data has no valid history, no transaction history. Bitemporal data has both the valid history and the transaction history, and of course, uh, you know, transaction temporal data just has the transaction history and valid temporal just has the valid history. Some example queries that we could uh, answer based upon if we had data structures which contained data which had these different types of temporality. So, for example, if we had non-temporal data, we would be able to answer the question like our questions like, what do we think our customers' credit ratings are right now? Right? And you can think about if we just had a simple table with a key of customer ID and we had this one attribute, the, cust uh, the credit rating on there, we could answer a question like this. That would be non-temporal data. If we had valid temporal data, we could answer questions like, what were my customers' credit ratings last Monday as I know it now? Right? Or what do we think our customers' credit ratings were when Lehman defaulted right now? For transaction temporal data, if we had transaction temporal data, we could answer questions like, what were my customers' credit ratings last Monday as I knew it last Monday? What did we think our customers' credit ratings were when Lehman defaulted as we knew it when Lehman defaulted? Okay? 
And then lastly, if we had bi-temporal data, we could ask, answer questions like, what were my customers' credit ratings last Monday as I knew it last Friday? Or what did we think our customers' credit ratings were at the time Lehman defaulted when, the, when we told the SEC that all of our customers had high credit ratings? Right? Or what do we think first quarter GDP was when we told our customers an expansion was underway? What do we think our first quarter profit was when we gave guidance? Or what did we think the high for the day was when our trading strategy kicked in? So you can kind of see the, uh, um, you know, the, uh, the power of some bitemporal queries there. So um, this is kind of the, uh, the hidden agenda slide, but I guess it's not the hidden agenda. It's really it's the agenda slide. What I really hope uh, to, uh, to show you through the following slides is uh, this case for bitemporal data. And I hope to make the case for bitemporal data by showing you that only bitemporal data can give you a complete history or audit trail of what you knew and when you knew it. Only bitemporal data can give you full support for corrections. And by that, I mean a history of corrections to past, current, and future business times. Only bitemporal data can give you a reproducible business perspective history as you knew it at any point in time. And I also hope that we will see then how many current data issues are due to workarounds that bitemporal data makes unnecessary. And lastly, I hope we, th we see through some of these subsequent slides that what only bitemporal data can give you is important. It's important for increasing regulatory and compliance requirements. It's important for cutting costs and operational, risk, and operational risks of redundant data stores. And it's important to make better, more informed decisions, even including things like backtesting of trading strategies. OK, so they say a, a picture is worth a 1,000 words. I think an example is worth a 1,000 words. So we're going to go into a, a detailed example so that we get really grounded and these different types of, of temporality. This, uh, this example is um, we're going to walk through five events, which are down the left-hand side of the slide here that you see. And these five events are five different changes to a company's credit rating. Uh, not surprising, we're talking about these uh, two dimensions of time. So we have the x-axis is the valid dimension of time, and the y-axis is the, is the transaction dimension of time. And so we're going to show how when we process these five events, how this matrix gets filled up with data. And we're going to see the richness of data which these different types of temporality provide to us. There's a couple of things which are important to note about this example. One is, pretty obviously, it's at a day level of granularity. Nothing special here. It doesn't need to be a day level of granularity. It's just for uh, uh, you know, simplicity's sake for the example. Next, you'll notice that the, uh, the time periods that are associated with these events they're, they are in what is referred to as closed, closed format. Or the uh, more layman's uh, term for this format is inclusive, inclusive. So that means that the credit ratings, like for example, the credit rating is A for the third and the fourth. That means the credit rating was, was A for the, all day on the third and all day on the fourth. Okay, Not into the fifth and not into the second. And I mention this because this is an important concept when you get into working with temporal data. A lot of the physical storage uh, techniques that people use to store temporal data use the closed open format for storing the data because there are certain advantages for uh, you know, making sure the data is complete and in doing queries. So if you get further into this topic, that's something, uh, a to a, um, uh, an item that you're sure to, uh, to run across. The other um, thing worth mentioning here is that um, these inputs that we're going to be processing, they are what are referred to as state-based inputs. And this is in contrast to event-based inputs. So state-based inputs is when we have the beginning time and the end time, in contrast to event-based inputs, where we just have the beginning time of something happening. So that would be like, we just know that the credit rating became A on this day. That's it. That's all I can give you. Go and process that or store that information. So hopefully this is pretty clear. It's a simple example to, uh, to work with. <clears throat> 